Tonight at the homestead, we are going to be canning lamb stew. So when you're canning a meat type product or certain vegetables, that sort of thing, you need to be pressure canning. So this is a pressure canning recipe. First thing you're going to need is five pounds of stewing meat. Uh, I've got this all chopped up to nice sort of bite-sized pieces. That's what we like to go for. Um, any excess fat, that sort of thing, I always take off. Um, just that's the way we like it. So we're going to get the meat in the pan and brown that off and then we'll be adding our onions and, and everything else. I will put the recipe in the description, I'll write it out. But basically what we need are three cups of chopped onions, three cups of chopped celery, uh, eight cups of sliced carrots and three liters of diced potatoes. There they are, we've got kind of mixed colors in there. We've got some of our all reds, some of the all purples. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a mixture of everything in there out of the pantry, but this is great because as we're going through the pantry challenge, um, which we'll link our uh, starting of that series up above, we are going through stuff and this is great for restocking. That was basically all the ingredients. You're going to have some spices and we are actually going to do lamb broth, which I have over here uh, actually cooking. So rather than canning it, I've just made the lamb broth and we're going to put it right into the stew. And then we're going to get on to another batch of lamb broth. So I'll bring you back when we get to the point of adding some of the other ingredients. So you can see our meat is browning nicely, steaming quite a bit too. So hopefully you can see it. Now we're going to add our three cups of onions chopped. You could run these through the food processor, but I find that it makes them just a little bit too small for my liking for in a stew. We like it to be a little bit chunky. Get those kind of mixed in here. And then I'm going to do celery next. Again, three cups of celery. I have a feeling that this is not all going to fit in my pot. But we're going to let this cook a little bit here. And then we're going to add our carrots and potatoes. This is coming along very, very well. Going to add the carrots. Now, carrots, it's eight cups. Now, the interesting part is I still have 12 cups of potatoes to get in here. What's your call? Is it going to happen? <laughs> Let's, oh, maybe it'll make it. It might do it. This pot holds eight liters. And this recipe usually makes seven quarts for in the pressure canner and then a little bit left over for us to eat for our meal that day. Look at that. We got it all in there. Now the big question will be, can I stir it up? And basically, uh, you're going to be putting in however much broth you need to cover this. So my plan at this point is to take my broth out of my pot that I'm making that in and just putting it into this one. It's going to get some rosemary and spices in there, but that's all right. The broth also has garlic, salt, all that sort of stuff in it, which makes wonderful flavorings for this stew might even get the odd onion I'm not worried about it i wish you could smell it it smells incredible anyways i'm going to keep scooping here and once we have enough liquid we're going to need to bring this to a boil we're going to add two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of dried thyme. Oh, I'm starting to see liquid coming to the top here. There we are. We made it. Okay, well that one got in there, but that's okay. So, we're there on the liquid. I'm going to put in our salt and pepper. 
salt. So it was two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of our homegrown thyme. And then we're going to see how well we can stir that up, and then we're going to bring it to a boil. And then it will be time to jar this up, and we'll bring you back when we get there. So you can see here our stew is pretty much ready to go. I'm just getting the pressure canner all prepped up. I've got my three liters of water in the bottom and I'm about to just oil the seal here or the, the whatever you call that rubber gasket type thing. I always oil it because I do feel that it helps to prolong the life of this. So I just use a little olive oil on my hand and then in it goes just like that. And now this is all ready for when we can up our stew. We're just starting to see some little bubbling and I just want a little bit more than that and then we're going to jar this up. This is actually a great recipe for stew because you can take, if you, if you don't have lamb, you could do this exact recipe with beef and it turns out amazing as well. I would just use beef broth instead of lamb broth, but all the spices I think would be exactly the same and it would taste fantastic. Lamb is just what we have. <clears throat> All right, so it is definitely boiling away at a good enough pace for me. We're gonna jar this up. So the nice thing uh, with pressure canning is you don't actually need to sterilize your jars. So we are just going to go straight into filling, which is wonderful. Of course, it's not gonna fill easily. I love wide mouth jars, but they need to develop a wide mouth spout. We want to fill that jar. See if I can hold it up for you. It's a little warm. To about the three quarter mark, maybe a little bit higher. I'll put a little bit more in. And then the rest you wanna fill up with liquid because you've gotta make sure you've got enough liquid in this for pressure canning. And just a couple more potatoes. There we are. And then we're just gonna kinda of scoop mostly liquid. There's gonna be a few more bits in there. And then basically when you take one of these out to cook it, what I do is I just add a tablespoon or two of flour and we're good to go. So we want to leave an inch of head space on this for pressure canning. Get one more potato, that'll just top it up. Perfect. All right, so we have our jar filled and ready. We're just going to lift our funnel over, put a lid on, and what I do is finger tight. Basically, it's as soon as that starts to spin, that is where I leave it. And into the canner that goes, and on to the next one. And we're going to fill all seven of these and get them going in the canner. So once I've got this ready, I'll bring you back to discuss a bit more about the pressure canner. So you can see there, our little guy has popped up, and our steam is belting out. Actually, you probably can't really see the steam. You can hear it hitting my hand. Ooh, that's hot. So now we're going to put our weight on and that's basically it. So once this gets to 11 pounds pressure, we will start counting our time and we'll bring you back when we take these jars out and have a look at just how it turned out. Well, there we go. All seven are out of the canner, still bubbling away, but looking fantastic. None of them siphoned. I'll show you the water here. Still beautiful and clear water in there, which is wonderful when it comes to pressure canning. So give this recipe a try. We make this probably once a month and everybody around here loves it.